So speed breeding is the process of breeding two plants really fast, as you could tell by the name. And so to achieve the success of speed breeding, you need an enclosed environment for growth, and you also need to have light because, you know, the three needs of plants that we learned in second grade. Plants need water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. Also some soil or water, because obviously they need to grow in something. And so, yeah, and NASA used this technique to speed breed plants in space, which is very cool, because, you know, space is nice. Um, so the concept for speed breeding uh, comes from prolonged photo periods, which reduce generation time, otherwise known as the growing. Um, it also intense, it relies on intense lighting, which we have here. These are called lights. And these, that boosts the health at the same time. So the plants get healthier and they can breathe faster. And lastly, uh, it uses a glass house so that you can go in the daylight without lights because our sun is a natural light. So yeah, you don't need lights for that in the morning, obviously. So uh, to set up a speed breeding chamber, which is pretty hard, because you know, NASA scientists kind of got some trouble with uh, setting this up. So to start off, you need to have a lights in the PAR region. So blue, red, and PAR ranges. So that's why I have blue and red lights, and that's why I was shifting through the settings to see if I can put these two on. Secondly, it needs a photo period of 22 hours of sunlight and two hours of darkness. The two hours of darkness is for growth. The 22 hours are for, you know, the light to take in. It's kind of like us eating and us sleeping. Because we grow when we sleep, not when we eat. I mean, you could, but let's say that. Um, temperature. So temperature needs to stay the same in most cases. Because, you know, if you turn up the AC, you feel really uncomfortable. Same with the plants, especially when they're speed breeding. Because if we do anything faster, you need everything to be accurate. And lastly, uh, you need humidity. So whenever you get thirsty, you need water. And so you need to have a certain amount of water. So like in your fridge, in your kitchen, just wherever. To drink the water and get unthirsty, as I would say. Uh, so speed breeding design. So you need a room with three meter by three meter by three meter. Insulated sandwich paneling with seven LED light boxes. So you would have um, eight of these different lights. Then you would also have paneling so that there, there's no light coming in or going out. If This is not for greenhouses. But yeah, you have no light coming in or going out or water coming in or coming out. Um, lighting is set to a 12 hour photo period for four weeks. So that shows that the plants need time to adjust to the light because, you know, they're born. It's like coming out of the womb. You have to wait for two years before you can start talking or anything. But for those two years, you need help. And so you sleep more, you eat more, all of that. And then when you get older, you can sleep less and do the same amount of things, which is the 18 hours. Um, and then you need an inverter for electricity to run these things. And you also need automatic watering, so sprinklers. You've seen them in school, you've seen them at home, all of that. This is an example. It looks pretty cool, right? You can build this. And so the plants that you can use for speed breeding have, are war wheat, barley, canola, soybean, rice, and amaranth. So amaranth is, uh, is down here. It looks kind of like fake puppy seeds. Um, you know what tomatoes look like. Those are tomatoes. And you also can do this with day neutral plants, like tomatoes. Yeah. So the advantages of speed breeding, uh, so we have an advancing human population, right? We went from, I think, we went from quite a few billion to more of a quite a few billion pretty fast in about two years, I'm pretty sure, or 10 years around that range. And so with a bigger human population, we need more food, because you know, everyone has to eat. And so uh, that's why we use this. And it's also more energy efficient than just having a normal breeding station. So the future of speed breeding is um, just having more plants, that, more plant types 
that it can grow and breed, which is very nice because we also want variety in our foods. Like people want chocolate, which is pretty exotic, pineapples, all of that. So if you want that, you can use speed breeding and you can get more of that delicious stuff. And uh, you can advance, get advances in light technology. So the things that I'm using right now aren't LEDs, they're fluorescent lights. So we went from fluorescent to LED lights to conserve energy and they also do the same thing. So we're gonna have more advances in that. And this will be done to short day species like maize and rice, because you can grow them really fast. As many know, Asian diets have a lot of rice and a lot of other diets do too. So this is due to how fast rice can grow and it can be do it even faster. So more rice in your meals. Conclusion, uh, speed breeding could rapidly generate food so that we have a better human population and a bigger human population. Um, and it will also be led to, uh, we, we already have uh, plants that have better traits than the generation before. So we're also doing that in humans, so this could possibly go into plants. And that's the same thing at the bottom. Thank you. This is coming from your local lab scientist, and I hope that you encourage speed breeding in the future generations.